hi there and welcome back to another episode at station road now in today's video we're going to look at another review and this time this will be my first review of some rolling stock and this would be the rapido gunpowder wagon So before we get into the review, I thought I'd just do a wee catch up on what has been happening on the layout and I can safely say nothing has been happening at all. So just to sort of touch base where we left off last, I haven't got any further with the town scene and the last little bit I did was this customised back scene. So the main reason I haven't really got any further with that is because it's just simply been too cold to sort of work in the garage and although these components can be taken off and brought into the office or inside the house I need to do some spraying of matte varnishes and then the spray glue and things like that and unfortunately those things I can't really do anywhere else but in the garage. So let's get into the review of this wagon and I know it has been reviewed by a few other channels and the reviews are pretty favourable and I think in my review the biggest question I really had about this wagon was the price unfortunately because what I couldn't understand is why the recommended retail price of this wagon being almost three times the price of another wagon which is produced by Daypole and what are the differences? Is it possible for me to understand why there is such a significant difference in these prices? So the recommended retail price for this wagon currently as I can see on the websites is £32.95 and I also had a hunt around for the Daypole gunpowder wagon and it seems to have a recommended retail of £11.15 so you can see the difference is quite phenomenal. Now I bought this wagon back in April from TMC and at that particular time they were selling this wagon for around about £23 which is what I paid for it so that's almost £10 less than what the RRP is. So I think let's just get into what the detail is in this wagon and we are going to compare it with the Daypole wagon which I do have one of those and let's just see if we can figure out why this price is as high as it actually is and also actually figure out why the Daypole price is as low as it actually is. So with the Rapido wagon the detail is quite exceptional although there is one oddity in there in that the main body of the wagon doesn't actually have any separately fitted parts but of the molded detail that's actually on the body it is actually very fine and things like the chain link on the door latches and the hinges and the rivet detail has been exceptionally well molded and done to quite a degree of finesse particularly I like the chain link and although it's almost really quite difficult to look at with the naked eye of course when we zoom in and have a look at it the chain link is extremely well detailed for a molded item so you haven't got that sort of paint that sort of fills in all the gaps it really does actually look like maybe it is separately fitted but of course it's not but I think really where the Rapido wagon does stand out from the crowd and that is the attention to detail in the underframe with the brake rigging the axle boxes and all of those types of elements and a lot of those are separately fitted components and it does look fantastic now the debate that I'd probably want to raise is they've gone to town on the underframe with the separately fitted parts but then they have kind of skipped over the body itself and 
why is there not maybe a few more separately fitted parts there? But in hindsight, I'd probably say if they did have separately fitted parts on the body, then of course they're going to be extremely fragile and very likely that things will fall off and break and disappear into your layout somewhere and probably into a tunnel where you'll never find it again. So in order to sort of gauge the detail with the Rapido gunpowder wagon, I did actually find myself going to the Daypole wagon in order to make those comparisons and really actually sort of judge whether the detail has actually come through at a much higher standard. And I'll say now that yes it has, I mean it is actually a far cry from the Daypole wagon. Now probably one of the first things I noticed when comparing these two wagons is the difference in size. So I could be wrong but my understanding is that the gunpowder wagons were actually a standard design and then there were many sort of variations of that wagon and they've of course gone through many renditions and changes over the years but I managed to dig out a schematic of the original design, well I think it might be the original design of the GWR gunpowder van. So it had measurements on it which was great. So when I compared them and scaled them to OO scale, the Rapido wagon comes in bang on. It measures up exactly to scale this GWR schematic. When I measured up the Daypole wagon, we discovered that there was quite a discrepancy in the size. So in terms of the length of the Daypole van, it appears to be in scale one foot longer and four inches wider. So that's quite a discrepancy, to be honest. So looking at, for example, from the roofs, you can clearly see the size difference and that is in the length and then also of course in the width. Now I will actually say one thing now at this point about the Daypole wagon and a little bit about its history. Now it is very old tooling so as far as I can see from the research I've done the Daypole wagon actually goes all the way back to Hornby Dublo. So that tooling dates back to possibly the late 50s, early 60s and then Wren took over the tooling for it and they produced the same wagon. Now from what I can see possibly maybe Daypole have refined that tooling just a little bit possibly somewhere when they took it over. Possibly the underframe is a little bit more of an improvement and then of course one of the key things that Daypole actually did was put in NEM pockets and narrow tension lock couplings. So the version I have is a weathered Daypole wagon so it's possibly a little bit tricky to really make a decent comparison because unfortunately the factory weathering on the Daypole wagon is actually pretty average. It's not been done terribly well. So when we compare things like printed detail, clearly the Rapido wagon has a far clearer and far more advanced printing technique and they have done some exceptionally well printed detail and although you can't read any of it to the naked eye when of course under a macro zoom lens you can actually read all the wee decals and that includes the ones that are on the body and also on the sole bar as well. So the printing is exceptional and that I find extraordinary. Of course on the doors comparing between the two wagons the Daypole wagon is just simply a very crude representation that there is meant to be a warning sign there. Of course Rapido have gone to the lengths of actually producing the printed detail for that warning sign which basically says that unauthorized people are not allowed to open the wagon. So when looking at the molded detail between the two wagons clearly the Rapido wagon has far greater finesse with its moulding and it should do. Realistically we are looking at a comparison between a very recent current day manufactured wagon 
and a wagon that was essentially tooled 60 years ago and probably really hasn't changed a lot so I would have expected the Rapido wagon to have much finer molded detail. So when looking at the underframes there is a vast difference between the two wagons. The Rapido wagon has a wealth of separately fitted detail, it is finer, it has a lot more finesse to it and as you can see with the Daypole wagon it is pretty crude, it's very chunky and it's really showing its age. So some of the specific areas of the underframe where we've got the axle boxes and the handbrake the differences are really quite staggering so the Rapido wagon has a much truer representation of the prototype whereas the Daypole wagon with its 60 year old tooling is looking very toy like and quite chunky so did I find any issues with the Rapido wagon and yes there were two issues one was a loose buffer that kept falling out and I've since glued that back in with a tiny little wee drop of glue and so it's easy to fix so should have Rapido quality checked that yes they probably should have but in saying that it is an easy fix it wasn't broken as such the buffers are separately fitted items and they actually fit into small holes in the end of the buffers the only other issue that I found is the wheels weren't overly free running so one of them was okay and the other one was pretty poor it only made a few revolutions when I spun it now once again it's an easy fix because it's not broken as such it's just that the axle boxes maybe are too tight or it just needs bedding in a bit now when I do come across wagons that do have stiff wheels what I often do is actually clamp the axle boxes on both sides and then give the wheels a good spin so essentially you're working the end of the axle into the axle box and sort of bedding it in so I did that on both axles just to improve them and it does make a huge difference so when I spun the wheels they spun for quite a number of revolutions I wasn't going to count them so that's sort of the comparisons that I've sort of made and I really did feel it was good to have the Daypole wagon so that I could actually make a comparison so and it was actually a good comparison because Daypole we're looking at a 60 year old tooling and of course Rapido's brand new tooling and yeah there are some massive differences and advancements and Rapido have done an absolutely fantastic job replicating this wagon they've got the correct size of the wagon they've done really well with the molded detail which is almost borderline looks separately fitted but it's not and then of course they've really got into town on the underframe now would I say that the Rapido wagon is worth 30 odd quid and I probably say no I think the price that I paid for it which was around about 23 pounds was about right I think that was actually a fair price because we've got to consider the amount of work and effort that Rapido have put into this tiny little wee wagon so they've really gone to town with the underframe and they've really made sure that the molded detail still stands out after it's been painted so in that I feel I do have to give Rapido a great deal of credit and then at the other end of the scale looking at the Daypole wagon and it's very cheap price of £11.15 and that I feel is a fair price I certainly wouldn't ever pay anything more than that you've got a wagon that's reasonably well represented for the age of its tooling so it's good enough to run around your layout and go hey look there's a gunpowder wagon but if you want something that's prototypical then it's not really going to suit 
So the Rapido wagon is definitely going to give you your photographic and video opportunities and I think probably with a little bit of weathering that would bring out or pick out those moulded details. So in summing up I guess you could say this review was just as much about a Daypole wagon as it was about this Rapido wagon but I kind of felt like I really did want to show that comparison and in doing so I don't really want to trash the Daypole wagon. I think it is actually good value for what it actually is and although its tooling is pretty old and a little bit inaccurate it's still actually a reasonably okay model to have on your layout. So I think that pretty much sums it up for this review. I certainly hope it's given you some insight into this Rapido gunpowder wagon and maybe it has spurred you to go out and purchase one. So I'll leave it there for now. Do take care everyone. Look after yourselves. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you next time. Bye for now.